This episode was brought to you by Autograph Events, our sponsor. Come take my hand, I will walk with you. I will let go till you say so. There isn't anything I wouldn't do. Wanna make sure that you understand. Thank you for tuning in to the Crody Files. I'm Craig Bryson. And I'm Jody Mears. And, and together, together we, we are, are the Crody, Crody Files. Files. Welcome to our next episode, The Power of Personal Branding for Administrative Professionals. In this episode, we will be discussing the importance, the guidelines that we suggest and why it is important to work on your personal branding as an assistant. Without you, there is no tomorrow. So you know I love this topic already, Craig, but I haven't always been a fan until I've come to understand it a bit more about personal branding. What's your take on it and how do you feel about it when someone says, Craig, you need to work on your personal branding? I started looking into personal branding back in 2008. I started going onto LinkedIn and created an account. I wanted to get out there and try and find more male years that I could actually work with. That's when the personal branding came in. And the information that I'm trying to get out there is it pick me or look at me. You're the best. That for me was really uncomfortable. What does that mean, personal branding? Was you even aware that it was personal branding back in 2008? No, I didn't. No. If we're talking about LinkedIn, because personal branding for me is it displays and it reflects your reputation online. Yeah. That's what personal branding is for me. And you can't get away from it. Online, social media, you are giving off a persona. Yeah. At the time when I joined LinkedIn, because again, that's what I associate personal branding with the social media of choice. But depending on what business you're in, all social media platform can be utilized for personal branding, right? And for your business or products or services. Yeah, when I think I joined LinkedIn around 2010, and I was always told, oh, it's just a place where you put your online CV if you're looking for a role. If you're looking for a job, you need to join LinkedIn. Yeah. And how far it has come since then, yet so many people still that have that opinion of platforms like LinkedIn for personal branding. Yeah. When we think about what is personal branding and, and why we need it, I think first and foremost, we need to, well, I certainly think about what is your platform of choice based on your goal? What do you want to be doing and why do you want to use that platform? I now know it's definitely not the only thing LinkedIn um, provides. It's not just a a recruitment pool. No. But once I started utilizing it properly and learning more about it, I've just come to love it and get into it and open up more and let my guard down and understand what my drivers are for sharing knowledge and working on my personal branding. Personal branding for me is showing people who I am, where I am coming from, my ethics, what skills I have and how I increase that. It's almost like having Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola is around the world. That's exactly what you're going to be doing for yourself. You want to be able to be acknowledged as a trustworthy, great communicator and broadcasting somebody who is looking for a person that could help them and they look up to you as a mentor. That's what personal branding is, especially when you go into networking environments and people go, oh, there's Craig. Oh, I know who Craig is. And it's easier to have that icebreaker when you go into a meeting and go, oh, well, Craig's here. I feel more comfortable because... I know what he's like. You're getting yourself out there for people to understand who you're about and what you do and where you're coming from. Yeah. And I think as assistants, we run from personal branding because it's that word that has so many negative attachments to it or assumptions made by it that assistants are not seeing the need maybe for why do I need to work on my personal branding I have a job I'm okay I'm good thanks don't need to do anything like that I I don't need to 
show or tell a story. I don't want my public life out there, which I've heard yeah. a few times or there, thereabouts. But my reply to that is two things. You've been working on your personal branding, which kind of coincides with networking in a way, doesn't it? Because yeah. your networking brings it to life. You've been working on that probably since you were young and you never realized it. Mm. Like, were you ever a member of Boy Scouts? Boy Scouts, or, yeah. Yeah. Back in the day, it was a girls' brownies. brigade, boys' um, brigade, brownies. Yeah. And you think of that's a networking situation, isn't it? Yeah. And maybe pen pal. Yeah, I remember pen pal. You had a friend that you would keep in contact with and you would make conversation with them. You're still giving off an element of personal branding in those situations. You're building connections. You're telling your lived experience through storytelling or letter sharing in yeah. pen pal situation. We have been doing it all this time anyway. Why is it important for the assistants when assistants, on, on the whole, the generalization is, yes, all right, yeah, we're the backbone of the office we're, mm. or the organization. We keep everyone together. We elevate and we're enablers. But we often at the back. Yeah. We can be leaders, but we often... If you do lead, you might lead from the back. Why do you think it is important that assistance in general should be, or not so much need, you don't have to, but why do assistance should be I, well, aware feel, of personal branding? I feel that the EAs tend to be behind the scenes, making the CEO or the exec look great. They never get the limelight. We need to be seen or heard. This is the reason why personal branding is really important. We always support and, and trying to fix the problems with the exec. It's about time that we start uh, stepping forward and showing who we are. This is what we're about. This is my skills and this is what I can do. I think that's when we will be taken seriously and get a seat at the table to, to help us better the company as well. Uh, execs tend to come to us to help solve problems. We always give them our advice and then they go on and do what we have suggested. I think it's about time that we should be able to use our own voice and step up. Yeah. Uh, for me, from what you've just said, I can see the path where that personal branding will link to. And if you are an assistant who wants to become more of that strategic assistant and, and find that pathway into other roles... Working on your personal branding internally and externally is very much key. How are you presenting yourself, personal branding? What, what's your executive presence like? That's your personal branding. Mm. How you carry yourself, how you speak, how you communicate, that's all part of personal branding, isn't Agreed. it? You're making a conscious decision to present yourself in a certain way that aligns with your goals or the organization goals. So it is important for me to work on my personal branding because it adds credibility to the things we share on yeah. LinkedIn. It, it adds credibility to the knowledge and validity, really. So if it, it builds trust. If people can see and connect with your storytelling and experience sharing, Personal branding is connecting with others through your lived experience. I've become within my working environment a more of an influencer. I find that the reception or the office manager would always come to me and say, we were setting up this meeting system. Can I have you take a look at it and see how, from your perspective, how it would work? Or catering has come and asked me, for my advice, um, we're going to be serving food to these clients. What do you think? They all know me from my uh, personal branding. I become more of an influencer and people want my advice because they know that I'm trustworthy. They, they know that I, I speak my mind and I, I say it as it is and trust what I said. Well, take that and use that to help them achieve what they need to achieve. That's also another part of personal branding. Definitely. And your power to um, network internally and externally on the same level. Yes. With similar information and the ethos of just share the knowledge. Yeah. People will connect with you naturally anyway. We mentioned, going back to the start, that joining LinkedIn back in the day was seen 
stand out and join LinkedIn. You must be looking for a new role. But personal branding does help with job searching and career progression as well. Yeah. Because as we know, the hiring process, HR can delve into your online presence and check to see what's this person like um, outside of, of an office environment. That's where personal branding comes into play professionally and personally. Your reputation definitely is your personal brand, but you still want to carry that through to your personal life because you still have that good reputation outside of an organization. It can really help stand out, especially in the competitive job market we're seeing at the moment. And it does increase your um, chances of getting hired, in my opinion, because there are absolute millions, gazillions amount of assistants out yeah. there. How are you standing out? Are you keeping up with what's required and the pace at which things are moving within our industry, especially with all the, the tech and tools available? I think it's becoming easier to get acquainted with personal branding than maybe what it used to be. And just standing out, I think working on personal branding to stand out isn't a negative thing. No. It doesn't mean I'm showing off. It doesn't mean I'm bragging. Hi, look at me, me, me. <laughs> We've had some high quality questions and feedback about personal branding. And we covered so much at the PA show. Yeah. Where we had our amazing live episode all that was great. about, oh my gosh, yeah, personal branding and the use of AI, elevate and automate. So if you go back and listen to that episode, you will hear firsthand from our, our guests, Amy Lester and Amelia Sordell, who just contributed amazingly to putting things into perspective and connecting the dots for the why it all connects with assistance as well. Definitely. Another thing I wanted to share is how I got involved in the personal branding. I was asked to be a part of an association, board of association. And one of the ideas was we were working on hashtag not just a girl's job. And that went out quite a bit through social media. Through that, my name kept on popping up because I'm not just a girl's job. I was approached by the Financial Times and also the Daily Mail oh. to do an article about men doing women's position jobs, like being a nurse, a male nurse, or yeah. being a florist. And I fell under the category of being an executive assistant. That was really exciting. I was nervous. I thought, well, do I really want to be associated with that? My boss said to me, you will regret it if you don't do it. Absolutely. And I had to get out of my comfort zone to be able to go to the studio, do the photo shoot, have the cameras. And it's overwhelming because you're normally behind the scenes. So yeah. now you're in front of the scene and the camera. That was fun. I took it as it came. After that, I was approached by agencies. Oh, we think you'll be great with this company. It does help a lot. And that's how I am in the job now from agencies approaching me. By ah, me being sort of out, out there yeah. and standing out from the crowd. Standing from the crowd. And backing up what you believe in as well. You believe in advocating for that um, cause, not just a girl's job, and yeah. highlighting to others that there are roles and industries that you can go into that don't necessarily align with bygone eras that are okay. It's okay to want to be male and be an assistant Agreed. and you highlighting that only increased your visibility yeah. and your credibility to be a self advocate. Yeah. And if you think to why that is important, if you're not willing to advocate for yourself, who else is going like, to wave the flag for you? Yeah. My mom would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but, my dad still thinks I answer the phone and put people through on a switchboard. So I'm not sure if I want my dad advocating for me. But if not you, then who's going to do it? I agree. Taking that leap. I mean, it must have been uncomfortable. I remember just tiptoeing on LinkedIn a long time ago thinking someone's actually going to see what I'm posting. Yeah. It's really nerve wracking. And you take on that split second decision to decide, am I going to post what people want to see or am I going to post things that I truly believe in? Yeah, it's a big decision to make. 
And you have that, again, split second decision where you must have been in the studio thinking, this doesn't feel right. I just want to get back to my emails. Can we just stop the whole thing? Yeah. I don't want to be a model or a superstar. I just want to go back to the office. Yeah, I've got so many emails building up in my inbox. (laughs) But then can you see like the hamster wheel of continuous cycle that would have put you in? And your boss is right. If you didn't do it, you would have regretted it. Yeah. And only talking then about the chances that you had and didn't take. Yeah, I agree. I think you need to take that confidence and just get out there and just do it. What really made me or touched my heart was people would come to me and say, oh, you're an inspiration. I wouldn't have been able to do that. Uh, I saw your article. I remember my boss coming back from a meeting is, could you reschedule that, please? I was like, well, what happened? Well, all we talked about is you and the article. (laughs) She read the article on the train and how impressive it is and why can't all EAs be like that? Oh, I'm sorry. It's like, no, no, don't be sorry. Now we've got the pitch. And that was so inspirational because he was like really excited. He goes, yes, that's my EA. And you see how initially the fear of branching out and stepping outside of your comfort zone could have prevented you from that situation. Yeah. You could have been your own worst enemy. Definitely. And your own blocker. <laughs> It's really a light bulb moment when you can identify that actually it's you that's the problem. It is. It is your fault. You're overthinking. It's your fault. Mm. And that's okay because it's very scary coming out of your comfort zone and doing something completely different. I couldn't have imagined me sitting here doing this with you today, even... 18 months ago, I think when we spoke about it, I said, oh, no. I'm not doing a podcast. <laughs> no way. Absolute cringe right the way down my spine. But look at us now. Yeah. And, and the excitement that we get downloads, we were at 5,000 now. It's been great to have people listening to us and getting to, together with us. It yeah. is, yeah. It's having that end goal of just sharing the knowledge, yeah. helping keep our profession alive. And talking about the sticking points, but also the achievements that are made and are seen and how to be visible with your story just then. Your executive clung on to that moment of, yeah, that's my EA. (laughs) You see how your personal branding actually influenced a meeting in that moment and brought in a new conversation. Not only did you elevate yourself, your confidence, your validity, backing up what you're saying. But you also had a knock-on effect to him and his ego and (laughs) helped the situation. Yeah. So don't be scared of it. Don't be scared of the word personal branding. It isn't showing off. It's definitely not bragging. It's self-advocacy. And if you're not going to do that for yourself, then who is? How are you going to stand out from a huge sea of people Call it competition if you want to, because in the job market, it is competition. It comes down to who stands out, who is going above and beyond. Yeah. The people that see you want to get to know you and they want to ask for your advice and sharing those skills that you have. And how did you get there? How did you do this? I really enjoy inspiring other people the way I was inspired by other people that I saw. It's just passing on that confidence and trying to get other people to come out of their comfort zone. What would be the best piece of advice that could even get someone out of the starting blocks who's an assistant who currently thinks, oh gosh, no to personal branding. I can't be bothered with it. I don't have the time to be on LinkedIn every five minutes of the day. That's another one. Um, (laughs) What would be your top tip to get them out of the starting blocks? If you think and feel it's wrong, do it. It's you that's stopping you. It's what you've been programmed that it's wrong. If it feels uncomfortable, then it's right thing to do. (laughs) So you feel the fear and do it anyway, like that book. (laughs) Definitely. And going back to what I was saying about we have questions and conversations, even at networking events that. People ask us, assistants, namely, obviously, ask us, how do you do it all? How do you have time for it all? I really don't have the time to be sitting on LinkedIn or TikTok or whatever else you might use 
what I've been thinking recently is the lack of knowledge and understanding that you don't need to be on the social media platforms that will elevate your personal brand every minute of the day. And if you're noticing I'm on there every minute of the day, well, that means you're on there as well. <laughs> Notice so it. True. You're on there the same <laughs> amount of time. In <laughs> so you are um, there. You're lurking. So the lurkers, yeah. the ghost followers, they're curious. They're there. They're in the background. They're not engaging. They're not finding the time in yeah. inverted commas but if to you don't uh, know... engage with you or even give you a double tap to acknowledge <laughs> your post. But Let's circle back to I don't time. I understand when you have to write blogs and write newsletters and they don't have time for that. But I think baby steps and by making baby steps, if you see a post that you like and you're passionate about that, don't just do a thumbs up or make comments, respond. Well, to... Start with a thumbs up. Start, start with a thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. And then I always like to make a comment saying, I really agree. Definitely. I would follow this. You need to start opening a communication engage. channel. Engage. Yeah, engage with it. Don't just go, scroll, oh, thumbs up. I think it's the engagement that will get you noticed as well. And fuel your creativity. Everyone gets ideas from someone else. Yeah. You, there's seldom very little people who will just come up with something out of the blue without having previously seen it or heard it or felt it previously from someone else. That's how we gain our knowledge, isn't yeah. it? Just through sharing it, story, reading, absorbing. It will help you get creative. If you see posts you like, make sure you engage and take something away from those pieces of information, whatever they are, on any platform and repurpose that. Not saying copy <laughs> or paste and make your own post, but think, oh, that was a good subject. Maybe I can then repurpose what Craig is saying in my way, in my style, in my voice, mm. and turn it into something that's also worthwhile sharing. It has to be worthy of sharing. It needs to add value. Yeah. I don't like posts that I see that are just maybe like one sentence and you think, is that helping me in any shape or form or giving me any like extra knowledge it's just creating more questions it might be that might be yeah. the reason why they did it but choosing your platform yeah is really important and how you use that platform right the way i use instagram is completely different to the way i use linkedin instagram for me is personal i don't mix my professional journey with personal and vice versa i wouldn't post anything too personal on LinkedIn. However, there needs to be elements of the real me on my posts yeah. because that is part of me. That's part of my personal branding. But what I'm trying to say is among all of the choices of the platforms that you have for social media, each one has their own purpose. Pinterest, LinkedIn, Instagram. TikTok, Instagram, mm. Snapchat. They all have that kind of niche idea and way of using it pick your platform of choice see how others are using it put your voice your tone mixed in with your end goal wrap it up into really valuable useful information and post that yeah if you want to post something that will inspire others to do the same but be very careful of what you post because once it's out there you can never give it back so be careful of that we're going to have a quick break to have one of our contributors answer a high quoty question. We'll be right back. Come take my hand, I will walk with you. I will let go till you say so. Hi Quody, I've got a question. With personal branding, where should you begin? Hi Quody, thanks so much for asking me to help you answer this listener question. My name is David Kosler. And most people I speak to struggle with marketing. They find it confusing. They don't know where to start. So we give you a plan that you can track that grows your revenue. We're based in the heart of Chesterfield. So to answer the question with personal branding, where should I begin? I think really it just comes from yourself, right? Starting with a platform that works for you, maybe LinkedIn, wherever your audience is based. Could be Instagram for you, could be LinkedIn, could be something else. So choose a platform and then focus on that and just be really authentic, right? Your personal brand is 
you as an individual, it's your competitive advantage, and you really want to share content that's helpful, that's value add. Okay, I always talk about adding value with my content. So think about how can this help someone else, right? So if you're an admin assistant looking to be seen and do more and stand out, you really want to provide value to those owners, the leaders that you're going to be helping, right? Why is working with you helping them? Yeah, what can you do to uh, make their life easier, faster, quicker, you know, basically to get more stuff done. That's really where you can help them, you know, and be super high achievers. So that would be my thoughts. Hopefully this is helpful. And if I can do anything else, let me know. We're now going to get back into discussing this episode. Your personal branding is your unique skills, your way of telling it, your way of showing it. And it doesn't matter that we're executive assistants. Your posts are nothing like my posts and vice versa. (laughs) And nothing like your posts who's listening at the moment, because it's my lived experience. We're talking about the same thing, yes, in the same way, no, which means there is room for all assistants to start their personal branding journey because you are going to add value in your own unique way. I totally agree. So that was a good chat. I like that conversation because it can go on and on. And again, circling back to our live episode at the PA show, I learned so much. I am still learning every day, are you, about personal branding? It's we, so we met powerful. so many amazing, wonderful people as well. We did. So do keep in touch. Let us know what strategies um, you implemented as a result of hearing Um, either the live episode, Elevate and Automate, or this episode, let us know what resonated with you, what you implemented and what changes you saw. Because personal branding is a powerful tool for administrative professionals. Don't rule it out based on your own um, preconceived ideas or negative connotations to the word. Have a go, see where it leads you. And by following tips, tricks and strategies, not only just discussed by us, but by other influential people, um, particularly on LinkedIn, will only give you positive results. Thank you for listening. In our next episode, we'll be talking about administrative assistance, leveraging learning for career advancements. Don't forget, we do enjoy your high quality questions coming in. You can check us out on craigandjody.com all our socials so you know where to like subscribe and get in touch that's right and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your platform of choice leave a five-star review where you can it really helps us stay visible to you our listener and we'd love to hear your feedback so just send us that email or high quality question today i'm craig bryson and i'm jody mears and And together together, we we are are the the crody Crody Files. files This episode was brought to you by Autograph Events, our sponsor.